Hi there, you're welcome back to this section of my YouTube channel tutorial. In this video, I'm going to take you through Gaussian elimination with complete pivoting. In our previous videos, we dealt with partial pivoting as well as naive method. So I'm going to focus on the complete pivoting technique. If this is the first time you've been on this channel, kindly support by subscribing to this channel. Please watch this video to the end so you understand it very well. So we have this system here. We have to find x1, x2, x3 using complete pivoting. To do this, the first thing to do here is to convert our coefficient matrix here alongside with our b or the right side of the equation into an upper triangular matrix by a method called forward elimination forward elimination then after we use backward substitution to backward substitution right in order to find our x1 x2 x3 so the reason why this is called complete pivoting is at any instance we always take a pivot element which happens to be the highest number in terms of magnitude among all the entries so if you want to start with your elimination and i want to choose a pivot point if the highest number happens to be at this side if the highest number happens to be at this side i will have to make sure i take this number from here to the first position likewise if i'm doing my inner elimination if it happens to be here i need to manipulate so that it moves up so that is the key concept in complete pivoting we always choose a pivot element with the highest magnitude and that is it So let's see. So at this point, the next thing to do is let me rewrite my matrix here. I'll have 0, 1, 1, 1, 2, 3, 1, 1, 1, right? And I'll bring a slash, okay? I introduce 2, 6, 3. Yeah. So once I get this augmented matrix here, okay, at this point, the next thing to do is I move on with the reduction process using forward elimination. But as I said, the complete method, we always look out for the highest entry in terms of magnitude. And we can now see that it's three, right? But why is three? Three is in root two. So I have to switch this root to my root one. So look at the switching. I'll just write row 2 switching to row 1. And I'm going to get the expression 1, 2, 3, slash. Row 1 has 6, so 6. Then I'll get 0, 1, 1, 2. Then the last entry can 1, 1, 1, 3. So this is the first row operation. Okay. But we are still not done because... Complete pivot to make sure that the highest magnitude will be our pivot element. And this side, the first entry should be the highest entry. Okay, so for that reason, I need to still switch this column to my first row so that I will have my highest number starting the whole matrix. So I will still write this is column three, right? Column three switching reports column one. But normally we don't perform column operations. So we just write three, one, one, right? Two one one, then one zero one. Here, then you introduce your six two three here. So at this point, it's very obvious we have three, which is the highest number here at our pivot point. So I can move ahead with my elimination. So to do my elimination, I need to eliminate this one and this one here. I have to get rid of them. So how do I do it? So I simply have to find my multiplier, which is going to give me 
if I want to eliminate this, the multiply become 1 out of what, 3. That is 1 over this entry. Multiplying R1. Then the row operation generally becomes my row 2 minus 1 out of 3 row 1. All going into row 2. The same thing will happen to what, row 3. So I can write the two of them. Row 3 minus sort is the same one. So 1 out of 3 row 1. All going into row 3. And at this point, I can write the final matrix assets what you have here so row one maintains three two one slash six here becomes one minus one third of what three that is zero here becomes one minus one out of three multiplying what two okay and what am i getting one minus two over three which is positive one over three likewise zero minus one out of three r1 what's r1 one that is negative one out of three here I'm going to get 1 minus 1 third of 3, also 0, 1. So this is for root 3, take note. So for root 3, it's the same thing as I'm doing. So 1 minus 1 out of 3 multiplying 2 again. So that is also giving me positive 1 out of 3. This is 1 minus 1 out of 3 multiplying 1. And that is 2 out of 3. Here is root 2. So 2 minus 1 third of 6. That is 2 minus what? One third of six, and that is two minus two, so here will be zero. Three minus one third of six is one. Yes, so we are almost on track. So at this point, where we've reached, we've managed to remove zero and zero, and gradually remove it. At this point, you realize that we are going to focus only on the two by two matrix here. We are done with the outside. For that reason, I'm going to ask myself, what is the entry with the biggest magnitude here? Here's 1 out of 3, 1 out of 3, negative 1 out of 3. And I can clearly see that it's 2 out of 3 here, right? So once 2 out of 3 is the element with the highest magnitude, it's have, it, it should be the starting of our what, pivot row. So always this becomes our pivot row, so row 2, after the first set of elimination. On that note, I'll get 3, 2, 1, slash 6, right? Then I'm going to have I'm going to have this zero. I'm switching this row up because it contains the number the entry with the highest. Okay, I'm switching it up. So what am I getting? I'm getting zero, one out of three, two out of three here. Then this one will come down. So it carries one here. Then here I'm going to get zero. 1 out of 3, negative 1 out of 3 here, then here becomes 0. So at this point, I just have to switch this whole column to this side, so that I can finally have 2 out of 3 starting as this pivot point. And I'm going to have this 3, 0, 0, then this whole column comes 1. 2 out of 3, negative 1 out of 3, and I'll have 2, 1 out of 3, 1 out of 3, like this. Then I forgot this. So I'll have slash 6, 1, 0. So at this point, I'm left with simplifying this here. Now, I have the highest one here, 2 out of 3 here. So I need to find my new multiplier, giving us this over this. So negative 1 out of 3 divided by 2 out of 3, multiplying root 2. This is the root 2, and this root 3. And the multiplier will be what? Negative 1 out of 3 times 3 out of 2 of root 2, which is the same as this will cancel. So my multiplier simply becomes neg 1 out of 2 r2. So I'm going to use this multiplier to perform my row operation. So after getting a multiplier times this, I'll just have to subtract it from my row three. So row three minus negative half R2, all going into row three. And this gives row three plus one out of two, R, one out of two R2 going into row three. So let's perform this. So let me write my matrix here. I'll have 3, 1, 2, 
6, 0, 2 out of 3, 1 out of 3, 1. Then this side becomes um, 0. Then this is negative 1 out of 3, right? Negative 1 out of 3 plus 1 out of 2 multiplying the R2, 2 out of 3. You realize that this will cancel. I'll have 1 out of 3 and I'll get 0 here. The same thing happens here. I'm having here to be 1 out of 3 plus here is what? 1 out of 2 multiplying R2. Now R2 here is 1 out of 3. Right. So here I'm going to get 1 out of 3 plus 1 out of 6. So 1 out of 3 plus 1 out of 6. And that is giving me half here. That is giving me half here. Then I come to this side. This side is 0. So 0 plus half multiplying R2, which is 1. And that is half. Right. That is half. So at this point, I'm done with my forward elimination. So I can write it clearly here. 3, 1, 2, slash 6, 0, 2 out of 3, 1 out of 3, 1, 0, 0, 1 out of 2, half. Right. Yes. So now I can find the values of x and y by backward substitution. So by backward substitution, my values. So initially we started with x1. Yes. So x1, x2, x3. Right? So I'm going to have. 1 out of 2 multiplying x3 is equal to 1 out of 2. Therefore, x3 is equal to 1. I'll go to the second row. 2 out of 3 times x2 plus 1 out of 3 times x3 is equal to 1. So 2 out of 3 x2 plus 1 out of 3. My x3 is 1. So I'll simply have 2 out of 3 x2 is equal to 1 minus 1 out of 3 is 2 out of 3. So my x2 is also as well 1. Then finally my x1, which I'll get it from 3x1 plus x2 plus this one plus 2x3 is equal to 6. So my x1, which I don't know, plus x2, 1 plus 2 times 1 is equal to 6, right? So at this point, I simply have 3x is equal to 6 minus 1 minus 2, which is 3x is equal to 6 minus 3, 3. x is also x1 is equal to 1. So therefore, the values is x1 is 1, x2 is 2, x3 is equal to 3, using complete pivoting. Thank you for being with me in this video. This is Calculus Family. Kindly subscribe to support and please turn on the notification button so you can update when I post new videos. Like and share.